Hi and welcome to Two Wheels Better. We're from Barcelona and this is Mont Uic, which is a nice park used in the Olympics. And this bike in front of me is a very nice bike. It's BMW's latest, the K1200 RS. Now many people have got mixed views over BMWs, love them or loathe them sort of thing. Well, I don't think there's many people actually loathe them. But to some they've had an image problem, they've been a bit staid and a bit conservative. Well, this one is different to that one. The paint scheme for a start off is not BMW-like. Very nice it is too. But the bike's completely new from stem to stern. And this fairing is something completely new. Very swoopy, all enveloping. Your knees fit neatly in there. These air grills here, they're outlets for the twin radiators, one either side. You can just see here the crankcase and the oil filler, but otherwise totally enclosed. The frame is completely new, cast aluminium from stem to stern, literally from the yoke down to the swinging arm pivot. It runs straight up over the top of the engine. The engine's rubber mounted um, within the frame assembly. New on the frame, swinging arm pivot here is actually on the frame, not mounted on the gearbox. That's another new thing. You can just see the rear shock absorber here, fully adjustable, lower mounting there, but laid further down than the previous BMWs, upper mounting here on the, uh, on the frame. Well, one thing that they haven't changed and isn't new is the paralever linkage here. This stops the rear suspension jacking up. When you've got shaft drive, it does tend to wind up the rear suspension and you find the back of the bike lifting. The paralever stops that, and so that's uh, a good feature which is standard on all BMWs. Their most powerful and fastest bike ever built, the K1200 RS, marks a significant departure for BMW in blasting a great hole in their voluntary 100 brake horsepower limit. With power up by nearly 30% on the old RS, the enlarged and lightened engine propels this piece of Bavaria's finest engineering to 155 miles an hour. But who's counting? This is not an out-and-out -out performance motorcycle, but it is BMW's vision of a super sports tourer, and a very nice vision it is too. The new 1200cc engine is a stroked and lightened version of the well-proven K-Series inline 4. With 16 valves, fuel injection and electronic ignition management, it produces 130 brake horsepower at a fairly conservative, but heady for BMW, 8750 revs. Mated to a new 6-speed gearbox with a slick, positive action, this is a wholly different sort of BMW. If you're after a top-speed rocket ship, there's plenty of other bikes to choose from, because this one, with torque increased by around 10%, is more in the intercontinental cruise missile class. Having said that, the acceleration will surprise BMW traditionalists, because this bike can really take off. It not only gets you off the mark quickly, but all that torque also means that opening the throttle at any speed in almost any gear ensures rapid progress. The frame itself is also new. As well as providing a home for mounting the suspension, the massive cast aluminium main section carries the engine and transmission unit in rubber mountings, unlike the old case where the engine itself formed a stress member. This all makes for a super smooth, super sports tourer. Available in the shops from the 26th of April, it will cost you 11,950 in blue or red, plus 495 pounds for this very fancy paint job. Well, having just battled through the midday sun and Barcelona's very busy city traffic, I can tell you that this bike isn't as heavy as some people might have told you. Yes, it's a heavy bike, it's a big bike, it's 1200cc, so it's got to weigh something, but it's not as heavy as this great big gun behind me. It's easy to put on the stand as well. Resting on its prop stand now, no trouble. Just bring it up to the centre. Nice handle over here on this side. Nice big foot pedal and a gentle heave and it should come up. There we go, no problems. Well, it's got adjustable everything, the handlebar controls, the footrests, and the seat's adjustable too. All you have to do is unlock it, the key's on this side here. Just unlock it there, pull the seat back, take it off, and there we are. And under here, you can probably see there's two sockets at the back, and there's two positions at the front here. <coughs> they mount on frame tubes at the front and at the back, so you can simply have it in the lower position or the upper position and then relock it. Piece of cake. Once you've got the seat off, there's the toolkit neatly exposed. This neat little rubber band here. Undo that. And look at this, I bet you're wondering what that is. This is an oil filler because the crankcase just uh, it's got a filler that pokes through the side of the fairing, so you need something to fill it up. Very neat too. So you get the toolkit out. Very nice toolkit, like all BMWs. Nice range of spanners, fuses, bits and pieces. But you only need a simple Allen key 
to adjust the handlebars. They're held by one pin which runs underneath the yoke here. This is to put the old Allen key in, crack the screw and do it, slack it off. You don't have to take the handlebar off but just slack it off. There we go. And that allows the handlebar to move down and back up the bar. About an inch of adjustment altogether, fore and aft. Very useful and you should be able to get the optimum position for yourself. Once done, you just nip up the old screw again and away you go. Again, it's sort of tailoring the bike to uh, your own dimensions, your own measurements, your own preferences. So no trouble, very quick, very easy and a damn good idea, I'd say. Well, it is a sports tour after all, hence it's having these cases on, which are an optional extra. But when you finish your touring and you want to go sport riding and a bit of scratching, this is all you do. Put the key in, lift up the handle, unlocks it, off it comes. And there we have the BMW 1200 in all its glory. And so now I'm off to do a bit of scratching. Well, I've been out on the new BMW K1200 RS, had a lovely time in beautiful weather, but I have with me Kevin Gaskell, who is the Managing Director of BMW GB. He's responsible for the car and bike operation in the UK. Kevin, thank you for giving me the opportunity to ride the bike for one thing. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Good. And <laughs> well, we've got the weather to ride it and really enjoy it, haven't we? Which is probably all behind coming to Barcelona and not doing it down at Bracknell. Yes, absolutely. That's why we came here, so we could guarantee to you the weather. <laughs> and why not? Now, this bike, it's, um, it's a step change for BMW, isn't it? Um, why have you actually done this, this sort of more sporty edge to it? What's brought this about? I think if you look at the market and the way that the market's moving, there is a growing demand for motorcycles as a leisure pursuit, as well as a, as a form of transport. What we've seen is a demand in this segment of the market. The, the touring bike is, is the long and successful uh, product that, that BMW have offered. Now we're seeing a demand for a more sporty machine, and that's what we're offering here, a, a motorcycle that will cater for the tourer and for the sports enthusiast. The initial orders that we've taken for this bike have come from existing BMW owners. Maybe that's because they were the first people to know about it, and therefore they've, they've seen it, and they've, they've started to place their orders for the machine. Um, we are looking to extend the brand. Um, this will probably appeal to a broader audience than some of the, the bicycles we, we've uh, built before. But are we pulling in the Fireblade owner? Well, the question we, we try to understand is why would somebody buy a Fireblade? What are they looking for? Are they looking for outright performance? Are they looking for it because it's stylish, because it's the latest fashion, or just what? And how do we appeal to that audience? I think the truth is yes, this is a 130 brake horsepower motorcycle. It's a very, very capable machine, and we'd like to think we'll bring in people from those sort of products. The power output significant, the biggest um, for a BMW, 130 brake horsepower. Did this, a lot of soul searching went under it with BMW? I think the truth is that we, as a manufacturer, have to look at the way the market's moving. And whilst we have had uh, self-imposed limits, and indeed within Germany and France, those limits remain, uh, the UK lobbied very strongly for a bike with 130 brake horsepower and the engineers listen to it. So it's a, it's a market driven thing. You know, there's only so long you can stand up. You don't stand on the beach and stop the tide coming in. It doesn't work. You know, this bike is inherently safe. It's built to let people enjoy it, but also be very safe on the road. And that's something which uh, we won't and uh, would never compromise. Last thing, sort of, what do you see the market as being? What's going to be the sort of throughput of, for the UK market? Uh, we'll sell about 500 of the uh, K1200 RS this year. Uh, I would hope that that, that market will uh, gently grow in the coming years. And you'll be very pleased. Well, from what you were saying at the, the presentation, you've got a lot of advance orders already anyway. Yes, pretty much the first year um, uh, production is, is sold out, which is quite a nice position to be in in one way. But on the other hand, if we're trying to attract new people to the mark, then we do want to be able to actually supply m machines for them. OK, then, Kevin. Well, I wish you all the best, and I shall, uh, I shall watch matters very, very carefully. Thank you.
Hi, I'm Candice James. Quick question for you. What have helicopters, scooters and wasps got in common? Well, scooters came about in 1945 when Enrico Piaggio asked a friend of his who developed or actually designed helicopters to look at creating something that was fast, effective, cheap and easy to ride for both men and women so you didn't have to straggle it to get from A to B. Now, I like the whole concept of scooters. Yes, it's a culture thing. Yes, it's a fashion thing. Yes, they look good on the road, but I'm looking at it for economic purposes. I don't want to own a car because they are expensive and they make lots of pollution in the air. So I'm here today to look at four scooters. I'm going to look at Aprilia's, okay? And a little bit later on, we're going to look at Piaggio's. But to start with, I'm going to look at Aprilia's. So if you just come this way, got four really nice looking scooters here. These two are Rally 50s. Now you don't need any sort of um, compulsory basic training license to ride one of these. You just need a normal driving license. So I guess you have to be over 17 and away you go. These are fun. I mean, look at them. They're cute. And you can also store your helmet inside it for when you're actually diving in and out of the shops. I would say though, that these can be slightly plastic. I mean, this um, guard here, this gear guard here, that is a little bit plasticky. But not a bad looking bike, looks colourful and actually says down the side here, safety fun vehicle. So that's your first Aprilia, that's the Rally 50 all-terrain scooter. This next one is the Gulliver around the world. Again, it's a scooter, again it is so much fun. Loads of features on here. You've got these gorgeous little lights um, tucked in at the side. Very, very sexy looking little lights. It's very, very moulded and it's got beautiful little badging on it as well. I mean, I think this is a really fun bike. Again, a little bit later, we're going to be talking about the cost of keeping these things on the road and how much they do cost to run. Now, this is my favourite. This is the Leonardo 150. I think this is a meteor looking bike and it's the most gorgeous midnight blue colour. And of course, that's got everything to do with it, what colour it is. Again, you do need a full license to drive one of these. In other words, you've got to take your compulsory basic training test to get on the road. But I don't think that's a bad thing because it is a bigger bike. It's got nice little um, body spoilers on it. Again, I would drive this because it's sexy and it's fun. No go faster stripes on this one. I think it goes fast enough. And lastly, you've got this Aprilia Stealth. This is, I think, in the League of the 50s. Not a bad looking bike, though. For me, though, it has to be the Leonardo 125. I'm going to take this one for a test ride now. Don't girls just have all the fun? That was a really, really, really nice ride. I've got with me Andy here from Moto Technique in Manchester. And what Andy and I are going to discuss are basically what, what is about all these scooters, what there is about them that's good. So Andy, can you just t tell me all about these bikes from this little one here? Yeah, the cheap and reliable transport. Um, you get about a city much quicker, you know, from Man into Manchester from you know, the South Manchester is probably fa faster than a Ferrari F40. <laughs> We'd like one of those though, wouldn't we? Tell me about um, this rally here. Tell me about the price of it. Right. What do I need to get on the road with this? Um, it depends whether you've got a car licence or not. If you've got a full car licence, you've already got a full car licence. So you've I got don't, a full moped licence. I need to take my, most, uh, my driving test. 
and that will allow me to drive. Yeah, or you could just do a CBT and you can drive it on a, on a provisional license. How much is a CBT? CBT, um, normally we throw them in with the bike. Oh, that's good. So I wouldn't have to go out and do anything? No, we can look after everything. Brilliant. Okay, tell me about this bike then. How much is it to put on the road? Right, um, on your road, with your on your road charges, you'd be looking at £1,949 okay. to put that on the road. And what sort of people buy these bikes? Uh, we have a really sort of wide section of people, anything from a 16 year old that needs transport to somebody that's just got sick of using the car to get into Manchester. Right, okay, that's cool. So, looking at this bike, what's its spec? What sort of um, engine has it got? Right, it's a little air cooled two stroke 49cc. Brilliant. Um, at the moment, it's in restricted form, that'll give it about 30 miles an hour. It's classed as a moped. Okay. Uh, if you have a CBT certificate, you could actually de restrict it, give it about 55 miles an hour. Right. Um, and then it'd be classed as a motorbike, believe it or not. Not a scooter? Not a scooter, no. Okay, cool. Is there anything on here that why I need to buy it? I mean, if I was a 17 year old, because that I think is probably aimed at, because it says here safety fun vehicle, why would you sell me that bike? Uh, they're very easy to ride, they're really quite safe now, they're using you know, very good tyres, good mm. brakes, so the actual safety of the vehicle is probably a lot better than scooters Brilliant. used to be. It's also quite convenient to use, you know, the storage space under mm. the seat, you can carry a full face helmet under there, right. uh, loads of miles to the gallon, a pretty reclaiming over 100 miles to the gallon for so these. That's pretty good. Yeah. Absolutely. Andy, why do I prefer this bike to the rally? This is designed for ladies, you know, it's, it it's is, designed for the style conscious woman about town, I should imagine. That's great. Um, this way, that's, they're sold mainly in Italy to women. It's, it's, it's tried to soften the image of the motorcycle in a way. Mm. Um, you know, it's even got a little face on the back of it. The lights are designed to look like well, a Well, the light, I mean, it is a beautifully designed bike. How much will this set me back? It's the same price as the Rally, you know, 1949 on the road. So for exactly the same cost, you get the better looking bike? That's aesthetics, isn't it? <laughs> it is aesthetics, but if it's designed for ladies, I mean, looking at the, um, the you know, the console, whatever you want to call it here, you've got, um, you've got a clock in it. It is a beautiful looking bike. Okay, so it is designed for ladies. Let's have a look at the storage space in here, Andy. Yeah, sure. What do you think we could get in there? It's designed so you can carry a full face helmet and probably get your handbag in the back as well. Um, <laughs> if, you know, if you want to carry your helmet with you, though, obviously you can get quite a lot of shopping or whatever in there. That is a really good size storage area isn't it what do you know what capacity it is no <laughs> no okay because these are these are things that ladies need is that a little light in there i can see yeah it is that is so gorgeous there's a little light in it nice looking bike again can you just tell me a little bit about the um engine yeah again it's a little air cooled two stroke you know you'd have to put two stroke oil in right to make um the engine lubricates it all the time. Okay. Other than that, it's dead low maintenance. Is it low maintenance? Yeah, they even right. come with a three-year warranty. Okay. How many? How often do I have to bring it in for, um, you know, for a, an overhaul or? Um, once every three thousand miles or a year. Okay. But if you think about it, it's only designed for short journeys. That is quite a long time between service intervals. Absolutely. Okay, that's great. Nice looking bike that. Okay. Bringing it over to the bigger bikes now. We're going to have a look at the Leonardo 125. Here we got somebody just bought an Aprilia off you. <laughs> this is a more serious bike. What is this bike designed for? Who is it designed at? Uh, this is more um, your mature commuter, I should imagine, right. that this is designed at. Uh, that's the Italian market for it. Okay. It's quite capable of going you know, on motorways even, really. Right. Once you pass your test, it'll sit at 70 miles an hour all, okay. all day. How much would it cost me to get on the road with this bike? Because it's obviously aimed at somebody that isn't you know, the teenager. How much would it cost me? Uh, 2849 for this okay. one. Okay. I'd need my CBT? You'd need your CBT, yes. And it's, a full motorbike licence? No, it's classed as a motorbike. Right. It's a 125 with 14 horsepower, so that means you can ride it on a provisional licence with a CBT certificate. So I wouldn't have to go and take that arduous motorbike test? No, but you could do, and yeah. if you pass the test on this, it'd give you the freedom to go on motorways, obviously. So you can't take this on a motorway without your test? Without a full licence. Without no. a full licence. Why, um, why would I want to have this, as opposed to the Gulliver or the Rally? Uh, this is a more sophisticated engine. It's a four-stroke engine. It's a four-stroke, right. Yeah, so there's no need to add two-stroke oil to it. Right. It'll just, all you've got to think about is putting petrol in it and getting it serviced once every, once every 3,000 miles. Okay. And last but not least, Andy, We've got the um, the Aprilia Stealth, okay. Between these two bikes, again, what's the cost differential? Uh, the Stealth is actually a 50cc as well. Right. Um, but this one's now got a water-cooled engine. Mm. We sell these more to people that 
want a scooter, want the style of the scooter, but want to tune the engine. Right. If we put an 80cc bore kit on these, they're up at 75 miles an hour and very zippy mm -hmm. through traffic. So this basically is comparatively the same as the first two we looked at? Yeah, the engine again more sophisticated. It's right. now a water-cooled two-stroke so that it can get rid of heat quicker. It carries disc brakes front and back. Mm. Um, with the bigger wheels and radial tyres, right. it does make it handle a little better as well. What about these shocks down the side here? It's just a position for the shock absorber. They move um, them about depending on the design of the engine. But of course, the other big name in scooters is Piaggio, and I'm with Brian West from BJ West in Manchester. All the people who used to have the scooters years ago, back in the 60s, when they was all 16, 17, 18 year olds, they're all coming back, buying them. They're fed up with stick, you know, stuck in the traffic mm -hmm. and things like that, so they, they like to get back on the scooter. Can I ask you, Brian, you used to be a mechanic, where do you think all those old bikes, um, scooters and Piaggios and... Lambrettas and Vespa, of course, is part of the Piaggio stable. Where do you think they all are nowadays? Uh, well, I don't know where they all went to. It's just unbelievable how many there used to be. Mm. Um, but back in the, the 1969 and that, I can remember going actually to the tip with scooters and just throwing them away. I bet you cry at the thought now, don't you? <laughs> in Italy, I mean, it is basically like the, the bicycle is in China, isn't it? So in Italy, um, they sell lots and lots of these things over there. Do you think that Manchester or any big city in England or Britain will ever be like that? Well, London um, apparently is the biggest sales at the moment. Uh, they are really, well, you just can't get enough of them. You know, we can't get enough at the moment. You know, you put your orders in and they send you what they've got and you can't pick colours or anything like that. You just get what you're given. Sort of. I think what's amazing, Enrico Piaggio actually um, developed this. He came from a nautical and an aviating background and his spec was to make it inexpensive to buy but easy to ride. But mostly he had um, the female, the woman 